guys. It's Fred and Sheila McCoy. We uh, did the final chapter uh, earlier, and uh, this is just going to close out our Hubert Bay McCoy Rio Hatfield saga. And uh, if you haven't read the uh, marker there, you can read it. That will explain to you a lot about Hubert Bay McCoy in a nutshell. In the background there is the uh, 48 star World War II funeral flag that Hubert Bay would have draped over his casket in uh, 1947 at his funeral. And uh, we're just gonna, Sheila's gonna go through as a tribute to Hubert Bay McCoy. We know that we have covered, we've got two or three videos maybe on Hubert Bay. Some of them's got the same thing, but some of them's also got other stuff added. Or So uh, we encourage you to watch them all, not for the hits of watching them, but for the, uh, for the information that each one provides, because each one may have something different that another one doesn't have. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna go over just a couple of uh, things here that we may have missed. And again, these videos are not for you guys. These videos are for Fred McCoy. These videos are for when Fred McCoy's dead and gone and somebody's researching Hubert Bay or uh, the peace treaty or the lawsuits or hopefully it'll bring attention. That, that is Alan Hatfield. That is the man right there that killed, shot and killed Hubert Bay McCoy. Now that's an old picture. That's before he passed away. He's an old man there. Uh, the murder of Hubert Bay happened, happened years prior to that. And uh, Alan, I remember him when I was a kid. I remember him coming in Blackberry Supermarket and smoking that pipe and, and his voice. He had a voice that stood out. You could hear him in a crowd of 50 people and you'd know it was him just by his voice. And the smell of that old tobacco there. I'm a non-smoker, so... Yeah, I don't know what blend he used, but it was a, it, you, you would know it. Um, but going over this, a uh, person brought up a good point earlier. Um, would Rio Hatfield accept the answer? He gave you and Sheila on Hubert Bay McCoy and him claiming in the bio to have served in the Vietnam War. Would he have claimed, would he have believed what he told Sheila and I on that video had one of his employees come to him and told him the same story. Would he have accepted that story without any more evidence than I read it in a book or um, I read it in a newspaper article? And uh, we, we don't believe so. Uh, but that was a question we had. It says, made peace um, and brought the Hatfield McCoy together there has never been more confusion and dislike than since this fake Hatfield McCoy peace treaty because of his because of Rio's Ron and Bo McCoy's egos and the untruths that they came out with not only that but it was after the 911 disaster attack on the World Trade Centers it, it couldn't have come out at a worse time he got all kinds of publicity from it. He says he doesn't like publicity. We'll show you something in a minute that will, I think you've already probably seen enough, but I would ask, did Rio email this bio to TA services? You know, Rio says uh, that he didn't say that. He didn't claim to be in the Vietnam War, but yet it's his bio. Uh, the same words that's in there about him stopping the, the Hatfield McCoy feud, the big, to do that he's always done about the peace treaty. It's almost exactly uh, the same words. So that's why I honestly believe, in my opinion, that he wrote his own bio. But yet he says that he didn't put in there that he served in the Vietnam War. Well, when I ask who, who put that there, can we go talk to them, let's track it down. That's when he turns loose and says, if you go to my company, and he starts with going to be a threat. And if you really want the truth, and if you really didn't do it, why would you act like that? Because I'm going to, I want to go to the human resources of his company and ask them, where did you get this bio at on Rio Hatfield? 
And if they say Mr. Rio Hatfield gave that to us, then we have proved him wrong once again. And if they say they made a mistake, then that's great. We can clear Rio. But with the Rio, with the way that Rio acted, and as upset as he got when he thought I was going to go to TA, and I, I can still do it, but we may not have to. You know, if any more comes of this than there is, then we can um, uh, dispose uh, people under oath. We can uh, check and see if there was an email. Very well, very possibly, this bio was sent through the internet. It may be an email out there where he. If he did send it himself, he may have sent it via email, and it may still be on the computer, and if not, they, there's ways of going back and getting stuff off computers. Um, you know, him claiming to have served in the Vietnam War is no different than Devil Ants claiming to have served in the Civil War. So, uh, Devil Ants claiming to be a captain. Uh, again, I've said before, he, he never did answer the question when I asked him. I do believe Rio was in the Army. I, I believe that he was. I don't believe he would go that far. Hopefully not, with nothing to prove it. But was he a sergeant? Was Devil Ants Hatfield a captain? So, you know, that's where it brings up questions. It just brings up, it raises questions as to a person's uh, integrity and truthfulness. Um, he says that he read that in a book about uh, Alan Hatfield, about Hubert Bay and shooting his grandfather in the back three times in a whorehouse, in a Brody house. He read it in a Hatfield McCoy book. There's never been a Hatfield McCoy book produced that has that story in it prior to 2011. In 2011, Rio Hatfield, in fact, she's holding it on a, there's a story right here with um, Harold Dispatch, May the 20th, and that's in 2012. That's, I think, the second time that it ever appeared, and that appeared by Daryl Fetty, who gave this story to the Harold Dispatch. But now this is 2012. You remember Rio Hatfield, if you've listened to his interview, he says, oh yeah, that was in the uh, Washington Post, May the 20th. Well, here's May the 20th, but it's not the Washington Post. Can you see my finger shaking there, how I do? Yeah. But um, I've got some nerve damage. But anyway, that was May the 20th, the date that he recalled, but he didn't say Herald Dispatch. He said Washington Post. If you'll go back and listen to the interview with Phoebe Judge, you'll see we have no reason to lie. You'll see that everything that we say is correct and as accurate as we uh, could find it and tell it. Um... So there's never been a book, Hatfield McCoy book, produced prior to 2011 that has this story in it. It was only after Rio Hatfield's interview with Dean King uh, in 2011 that this story started to appear everywhere. It appeared in the Herald Dispatch. It did appear in the Washington Post. It appeared all over the place, but it was after the first place that this story ever came out was right there, Granta Magazine. That's an insert from the Granta magazine. That is Rio Hatfield's words by Dean King. And right down here it says, Rio Hatfield II disliked the McCoys on principle and never had any intention of making amends with them. Never even considered it, he says. Never planned on doing it. I don't know what, uh, why he was so uptight about the McCoys. I don't know what somebody did to him, but that's his words. I have no reason not to believe anything that Dean King said uh, I've never I've never caught Dean King in a fib or a lie this story was not about stolen valor it was about Hubert Bay McCoy however after getting the question about stolen valor and realized the relationship to Devil Ants and his um, um, I don't know honesty Rio's honesty that's when we started searching, Sheila and I, for this uh, stolen valor. And it turns out that it is exactly what it was. Have been writing, have we have been wanting to expose Rio for his creation of the Hubert Bay story for years and years. And when the stolen valor story came up, it was just another false story and helped us to relate and expose the untruths that Rio has said throughout the years. Isn't it funny that it appeared that 
at least one of the websites had removed the paragraph you know th this is my opinion but one of them had the story had been removed and we showed it in one of the prior videos but yet it was still on another one the paragraph was still in there on another story where and still to this day now we've notified rio a week ago three or four days ago whatever it's been and i checked before we came on here and the story is still up now if it's a fake story and he didn't put it there why hasn't he notified hr to take that story down or to change it why hasn't he corrected it well i think it's a little bit embarrassing to go into hr and say hey you know that bio i sent you um i put that i served in the vietnam war and i i i, I don't know what happened i, I was I didn't do that. I don't know where that story came from. But would you take it out? But it's never been corrected yet. Guys, when you've researched the Hatfield McCoy stuff, as long as Sheila and I have, it, it really, uh, it can get to you. It can, it, can, it can really get to you. Now, I'm going to, Show us uh, something here. Sheila, go ahead and put it on me. Whoa! Hi! What a change! What a change we've made! Can you spot the difference? This is, this is the look that I had, except for working undercover for several years in police work. This is usually the look that I had. I shaved my head from the time I went in the Marine Corps. It wasn't until I lost my hair that I wanted to grow hair, but now you miss it when you can't grow it. But when I had it, I shaved it off. Guys, I'm going to show you a story here. This is what, just one of the files on, on Rio that we've got, but this is off of his, this is off of his webpage. This is Rio Hatfield. I'm going to show you something. Take out your phones, if you would. Okay. And hold it on there yeah. where they can see. Okay. And I'm going to take out, um, I've done inserted it earlier. I want to see so I don't have to retype have everything. Have watch you or? Hatfields and McCoy's Unity Call. Okay. Hatfields, Google. The Hatfields and McCoy's Unity Call. Okay. And let's see what comes up. The Hatfields and McCoy's Unity Call, November the 14th, 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, for a man that says that he doesn't like there it is whoa rio hatfield the author hatfield's and mccoy's unity call now this is a man that tells you guys this is exactly the same story so i'm going to let you see i'll tell you what i'm going out of respect i'm going to take his family picture off because he's got i think that's his family picture and, and yeah. his family's got nothing to do with what rio does so let's just take that off and let's just concentrate on what's in the yellow here i want i want to tell you something it says vice president of business and development ta services uh logistics published november 14 2018 i'm almost done with this story i'm almost done with rio hatfield it's been on our mind for years and years and years and it's been a relief um but let, let's look this is a man that says i don't need no publicity i don't want no publicity i just want peace i just want to wave my flag and i want to okay i'm getting this I, you're right you're right enough of that but that's it's what not. the man says you heard him in his sure. every time i quit talking and give him the air instead of defending himself and telling us how this story got in the Granta magazine or uh, Phoebe Judge, on, instead of him telling us how he got on his bio that he served in Vietnam War, he didn't explain none of that. He, he never tried to explain none of that. That's your chance to, to defend yourself. Tell us how that story got there. Tell us how this story about this World War II hero got there, that he was in a whorehouse, got interrupted by his grandfather, and he was mad because he got interrupted with services and he took another officer's gun and shot his grandpa. She showed you, it's down there on the wall where it says sentenced. Yeah. Found guilty, so I'm not gonna go over that. Okay. But for this person that says that he doesn't like publicity. Okay. We ended the world's most famous feud. 
That's right there, you can read it. We ended the world's most famous feud, the Hatfield and McCoy feud. I did this with two great men, Bo and Ron McCoy on the CBS early show. I, I wrote the truce and we signed it in front of our combined families in 2003. I. You know the difference in the Marine Corps and any other branch of service? There's no such thing as I. Sheila says for years at school and stuff, to, there's no I in team. So I. Now he says Bo and Ron McCoy really right there with him. But I wrote the truce. I did this. I did that. But oh, no, no publicity for that man. He's, he's totally... He just don't even like attention. Bullcrap. Let's talk about Ron and Bo McCoy. Bo from uh, Georgia and Ron from Durham, North Carolina. Didn't even know he was a member of the Randall McCoy clan until he was 35 years old. Still not seen no DNA on none of these three. We still don't know if any of them is who they say they are. You never know till you do a DNA. It's real simple. Most people's wrote us. I got message after message on here, text messages. Tell them guys doing DNA, we'll pay for it. Tell them, I, I've got a, uh, a third great-grandson of uh, Randall McCoy. Supposedly, uh, his, not on his part because he's had a DNA. He's had a DNA. He's a police officer in, in Florida. He wrote and said, tell Ron and Bo to have DNAs. I'll pay for it. I'll buy the DNAs. So you got somebody even wanting to pay for it. He, he's actually a third great grandson of Randall McCoy. He don't get involved because like Randall McCoy, he don't, he don't speak. And that's what's happened to Randall McCoy's reputation over the years, but it's okay. It's okay to be like Randall McCoy. You know, after me and Rio got into it the other day on the phone and I watched myself and, you know, I've interviewed and interrogated thousands of people over the years, 40 years. I've never got upset like this interrogating somebody, investigating, interviewing. Real had, had feel, I've got nerve damage, but besides the nerve damage, I was shaking like a leaf. Not from, not from fear. I don't, I, I'm too stupid to have fear maybe, but I, I don't have fear. Uh, I just don't, what, what, you can only die once, you can only do, there's nothing in life that's not an experience. Take it as that and learn from it. I was so ex elated that he was on there and the first thing he did was, oh, oh no, that, I meant Vietnam era. No, he meant exactly what he said, Vietnam War. Exactly what was printed. If he didn't mean it and he didn't put it there, he would have corrected it, 20, 2018, whenever it was put there, 2020. He would have corrected it when he seen the bio. Didn't want to correct it, nobody was questioning it. Why well, say anything? If anybody ever questions it, I'll just tell them, oh, I meant Vietnam era. That's what they all watch. Google, YouTube, Stolen Valor. Watch how these guys, how they backtrack when they're caught up in their mistruths. Watch Devil Lands, Captain, Wildcats, Civil War. Killed 100 men on Devil's Backbone. Um, this is going to conclude it for Sheila and I on the, on the Hubert Bay McCoy. She's giving me a thumbs up. This is going to conclude it. Um, you know, no need beating a dead horse. That's right. It, we've proved our point. Now, there's going to be people out there that believes Rio Hatfield. He could say that he's, he could say I've got a whole head full of hair and people would believe it looking at a picture of me. That's just some people can do that. And that's okay. That's those people. There's, there's a lot worse than that going on today in this that's world. Right. So, um, so people's going to believe whatever they want to believe. I, I think we've proved our case. I, I didn't present it the best. I wish I could have presented it better. It's okay. But when you're standing there and you're listening to a man and he's telling you this and that and you know from years and years and years of research, he's lying through his teeth. I, I hate, well, I don't. I, I call, a, call a spade a spade. The man was lying through his teeth. And each time that he would, you know, let me, let me explain to you a gimmick, okay? And some of you may not know this and some of you might, might. You know, there's an, if you'll Google TV shows, you'll find TV shows like this. Now, Rio said the other day, you heard me and Rio arguing, and Rio got real aggravated, and then boom, hung up on me. Mm -hmm. He hung up on me. 
Now Rio calls back later on while I'm still giving a, a talk. And he said, I'm sorry, Fred, I hung up on you by mistake. Well, in police work, there's something, and in business, there's business people that does that. Rio's a businessman, a smart, smart businessman, intelligent man. I'm not taking nothing away from this man on his intelligence, smart man. He's just egotistical. He's just uh, a narcissist. That's his personality. He's got a narcissistic personality. He likes to be in the limelight. He likes to show off. Um, he was talking about being on the phone with him and how he blew up. Is that all you was going to say? Yeah. Okay. Um, now I forgot my thought, though. That's why I was saying that, so I can maybe help you remember. Okay. Pause it right there. Let me try to... Uh, my mother died of dementia, and I think I'm... I'm getting there also, but anyway, um, and that's why I wanted to make these videos at this age in life because uh, my memory's not getting no better, let's, let's say that. What I was getting to is there's a, a strategy, and they'll teach you in the police academy, they'll teach you to it in business school, and you're talking to somebody, and the conversation's going south, and you, 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 it's getting worse and worse. What do you do? You continue to go on and argue back and forth and bicker, or do you, boom, Hang up, let them cool down. Uh, seen a guy one time on business, hung up, offered a guy something for his business or something, and the guy, they start bickering back and forth over the business, hangs up on them. You've just lost your deal. You've just lost, yeah, it's over with now. He'll call back. That's what he said, he'll call back. Sure enough, a few minutes later, the guy calls back. Hey, got disconnected, sorry about that, and laughing and, and trying to get, you're trying to reset the mode. You want to reset the mode. Mm -hmm. If you'll notice, and if it's on there, go watch the video, guys. I have no reason to lie, but go watch the video where I'm still talking and Rio calls back, and I, I want him to know. Now, the law is in Kentucky and Virginia, where he's at, is that as long as one party is in on the conversation, you're, you can tape somebody, which we told Rio is, reporting for our viewers. Now, we don't have that many viewers, but the ones we got are in inquisitive. They want to know. Yeah. I know that because we get texts and messages and emails. And yeah. They want to know. So, uh, uh, when Rio calls back, he says, <laughs> we've got everything still going, laughing. He's trying to reset the mode. Now, I didn't want to call him out because I wanted to continue the... I'm bad for calling people out. I'm bad for for that. And you, normally I would have said, you damn straight you hung up. You hung up. But that's okay. I just went along with it. I said, oh, okay. I, I thought you hung up on me. No, no. I hit the wrong button. What? How do you hit buttons? Well, I mean, you're talking on the phone, but it's okay. But what Rio was doing there is trying to reset the mode. He was right, trying to reset mine and his conversation. And he wanted to call back and say, hey, and he was nice. Hey, Fred, I wish you the best. And he started out with a totally on a different track. And that's what you do. And uh, and it worked for a while. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate you calling back. I love it. Thank you for... And then I said, but you're, you're not going to change my mind. What? What? You're still going to make me look bad? I'm not trying to make Rio Hatfield look bad, okay? Let's get that straight, people. I'm not trying to make Rio Hatfield look bad. Rio Hatfield loves being in the limelight. We don't have that many viewers, but I'm trying to give him as much attention. Him and Ron and Bo and William Keith Hatfield, they love it. William Keith travels from Oklahoma to Ashland, Kentucky to dedicate a historical marker that's incorrect, but he's there to, to dedicate it. I'm trying to give these guys their due. They want this attention, so let's give them all the attention that we can. But let's give it to them, let's give them the truth. And let's make them stand up and take notice that not everybody believes the, the, what they're saying. We thank you for joining us on this journey. This has been four or five bad videos. Yes. They're history making videos. They're truthful videos on our part. Yeah. There was only one man on that phone line the other day and that was Rio Hatfield. He was lying. He lied about Dean King. Not saying that to Dean King and Dean King putting that in his book, that's a lie. He was lying about reading the Hubert Bay story in a book before he ever quoted it, before he ever said it, that was a lie. 
He's the one that started that story. That story originated with Rio Hatfield. Oh, he had some of the fags. That was his grandfather. His grandfather was, at one time, the police chief in Mate 1, West Virginia, from uh, 45 to 47, two years. In those two years, he killed two men. He was indicted, arrested, and indicted for killing both men. He was charged with murder of both men. The first man, the name? Yeah. Rock Nunnery. Rock Nunnery was the first man's name. He uh, shot and killed Rock Nunnery, and he says that Rock Nunnery had shot him also. And um, he shot and killed Rock Nunnery. And uh, the officer that was with him never showed up for court for the murder trial. He never showed up. Said he got the court dates wrong. No, he didn't have the court dates wrong. He just didn't want to show up to testify against Alan Hatfield. He didn't want to show up in court. He moved to Pike County and took another job. He just didn't want to go against Alan Hatfield and tell what happened that night. There was only three people in that hotel that night. And that was Rock Nunnery, that was Alan Hatfield, and that was the, um, I think it was either a common guy or there's two, two police officers he had. And he didn't show up for court on the trial, so the only person they had to listen to was Alan Hatfield. And Alan Hatfield said, oh, he was going to kill me and he shot me and he done it. Well... He didn't, but they let him off because there was no other witnesses. And the, the victim, he's dead. Can't testify. Seven months later, he shoots and kills Hubert Bay McCoy. Shoots him in the back of the head. Sheila, pose right here. See if you can close in. Gunshot wound. Base of brain. Base of brain. Homicide. I ain't got my glasses, but somewhere on there it says homicide. See, guys, I just had to be standing in front of this paper. There's no, right here. There's no reason for us to lie. Show his name up here so they'll know death certificate. Yeah. Hubert Bay McCoy, show it right up here, death certificate. There's mm -hmm. no reason for us to lie. Mm -mm. Everything mm -hmm. we say, we can prove. This is, this is how you do it. This is how you make a case. This is how you prove your case. You know, we were talking yesterday about lawsuits and different things. You wouldn't believe nobody wants to be sued. Nobody wants to be in court. Once again... This is, was my mother, my grandmother's stuff, especially on the other side. This here, Hubert Bay McCoy's side, this is mine and Sheila's. We researched and collected this. But the Hatfield McCoy stuff on the other side, that was stuff my mother and grandmother. That's stuff that it, our siblings, my siblings, the family, and then our grandchildren has our part. We are the current curators of the museum. We have been uh, from the other siblings. But we're fixing an apartment upstairs. You can hear the contractors up there working. We had a water leak. Yeah. There's nothing worse than having a water leak in a museum with the papers and documents that we've got. And of all times, it's just lucky that we didn't have a whole lot of stuff damaged. But uh, So they're up there working now. So the museum's closed for right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. We was discussing Hubert Bay, and I've lost my spot, and it's okay. That's I don't, right. you know, I don't care anymore. We're, we're probably not going to be making a lot of museum videos at this point. It's like the the air has been knocked out of us. The say the air is out of our cell. The fire is out of our fight. We confronted Rio after all these years. I've done confronted Mark or uh, Ron and Bo and uh, we own Keith. Uh, there's several more out there, uh, book authors and different things, but I'll just be honest with you. You can, we've researched this feud for 38 years between Sheila and I, and me way before that with my mother, and I'll just be honest with you, this stuff can get, it can get into you. It can. Yeah. It can really uh, get you emotionally, because when people lie, and you've researched, and you know the truth, and you know they're lying, it really can affect you. And I'm gonna try not to let it affect me no more. Good. Uh, we've got this story out, it's, it's over with. Um, we're done. Okay. And um, that's up to everybody else. You know, I heard God a lot. I heard Christian a lot. I heard faith a lot. I'm not, I'm not here to judge nobody. I'll judge the truth. I'll judge what I can prove that you're saying. I don't know, I don't know Rio Hatfield's heart. 
That's between him and the good Lord. That's between him and the good Lord. Between me and the good Lord. I've said it many a time. My dad used to say, if you have to make somebody else look bad for you to look good, you're messing up. Well, mm -hmm. when I go back and watch these videos, I'm thinking, you're trying to make Rio look bad. No, I'm really, really not. I'm trying to make Rio face the music. I didn't, I didn't tell these tales. Rio Hatfield told these tales about Hubert Bay McCoy. Fred McCoy didn't say that. I'm calling his hand on it. We've investigated it. We found mm -hmm. evidence that what he's saying is not true, and we're calling him out on it. I didn't say somebody served in Vietnam War. He did, or his bio did. And if he didn't say it, why would he get so upset when I want to talk to TA services and see who put that in his bio? Who in the world would write in a man's bio that he served in Vietnam War if he didn't? I'd like to know who done that. Once again, I think we know, but uh, we've, we've done all we're going to do. Um, sad situation on everybody's part. Yeah. Sad that we had to call them out. We've tried to do this for years and years. Like I said, here's here, we have no books for sale. When I talk about books, don't think we're trying to push something. Sell. Here's mm -hmm. The green book was the first book, and the blue book is the second book. You know, uh, the evidence is in the books. We wrote in those books, and we put all the files, everything you see on this wall here is just about in that book. Mm -hmm. Did you see that monument she just posted? Now, you know, I was researching the other day. I, I, I'd never done it. Rio was, he said he was 14 years old when his grandfather had a bullet taken out of his belly. Mm -hmm. Well, he tells Phoebe Judge he had three bullets in his back. But he was 14 years old when he had a bullet taken out of his belly. Well, i done the math, and uh, Alan Hatfield died in uh, eight, uh, 1978. I think when you do the math, he was 86 years old. Somewhere in there. I could be wrong, but 86 years old. Rio Hatfield was born 1949. I know the month and the date because I've researched it enough, but not. Those batteries go dead on us, guys. I meant mm -hmm. for this to be a short video, and I mean that for most of them, but of course I get running my jaws. And But Rio says he was 14 when his uh, grandfather had a bullet taken out of his belly. He didn't mention none in the back. So that means there's still three more in his back, in that grave. If we can get him exhumed, there should be three bullets there. Um, when Rio, when Alan Hatfield died in 1978, Rio would have been uh, 29 years old. If my math mm -hmm. is correct, the way I've done the math, Rio was 29 years old. So Rio didn't have to read this in a book. Rio could have talked to his grandfather. You know, he's 29 years old. Do you not ask your grandfather when you're chief of police what happened? This and that. This, this tombstone right here, you know, this is what happened after. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. This is what happened after Hubert Bay was killed and they put a tombstone on his grave. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to say something that we couldn't prove. But there's two variations of this. Somebody said, well, they had two stones, and we took a sledgehammer to one of them and busted it up. Why would you bust it up? Why wouldn't you use it as a foot, uh, foot marker for the grave? Why would you bust it up? Some says that was a shotgun blast, slug right to the middle of it. Which one was it? We don't know. We don't know. But somebody had some hostility toward Hubert Bay McCoy, even after he was dead. Even after he was murdered, somebody had some hostility toward him. I don't know who it was. We'll never know unless somebody owns up to it one day. Guys, it's been nice talking to you. You're probably not going to hear from Sheila and I for a while. For a little bit. We're going to take a break. We're going to recoup. My back's been bothering me. And of course, like I said, you can see the, the nerve damage. I, I've got some health issues. And uh, I'm like Rio. I ain't no spring chicken no more, neither. And this is not good for neither one of us, for our hearts. No. And um, I wish everybody the best. I mean it sincerely. I mean it sincerely. And I hope Rio did when he told me that. But I, I mean it. I hope 
I wish everybody the best. I, it's done me good. It's like just getting something off your back. And I know Sheila too. Sheila don't, she don't get as into it as I do. And I don't know why I do other than I just hate to see the way people, I, uh, again, I was, I went in the Marine Corps at 17 years old. I wanted to become a cop. I wanted to, I didn't like bullies. I've always, my life, I've hated bullies. I was a little small fellow growing up, but I was a fighter. I was a scrapper and I would, I would take, I was, I would take up for big old heavy set people cause somebody call them fat so. And I would take up me smaller than the person picking on them, but I, I didn't care to fight. And I didn't care to, I like taking up for people. I've always been like it. That's why I wanted to become a cop. I become a police officer cause I wanted to help people. And, um, Anyway, that's the story. And uh, Sheila, you got anything to say? <laughs> Hi, guys. Hope you're having a great evening. Please like, subscribe, and share. No, no, I'm not. You're not getting out of it that easy. Do you have anything to say about the Hubert Bay McCoy story or Rio Hatfield or anything? I wish him well. My hands are shaking. Uh, no, you're okay. I wish wish him well. Uh, I hated it for. Um, Hubert Bay in Virginia, who was a baby when her dad died, she took her first step when he was killed, so she didn't even get to know him. So I hate that for her. Her mother told her she was waiting on Hubert Bay to get in from the coal mines. She mm -hmm. couldn't wait to tell him about Virginia. Taking her first step. Yeah. yeah. And uh, never got to tell him. Mm -hmm. uh, when they come up on the hill and said Hubert Bay's been shot by the police chief, uh, her father-in-law, Glenn, Hubert Bay's dad, and his brother, Jim, all of them went and got their guns, going to go back downtown and, and kill Alan Hatfield. They send word up there while the neighbors are trying to hold them back. They send word and said, it's okay. The police chief, uh, uh, Dan arrested. Chambers, mm -hmm. Dan Chambers had arrested Hubert Bay. No, uh, Alan. I mean, I'm sorry. Thank you, Sheila. I was trying to concentrate on the picture. Yeah. Sheriff Dan Chambers, there's the guy that arrested Alan Hatfield. In fact, he arrested Alan Hatfield twice. He arrested him in the first shooting when he killed Rock Nunnery, mm -hmm. and he arrested him in the sh second shooting when he killed um, Hubert Bay. Hubert Bay, yeah. So, uh, once again, uh, we have made a tribute to Hubert Bay. There's a gun that Virginia actually signed for us years ago yeah there's virginia hubert bay's daughter there's sheila and there is uh virginia's son scott there virginia's signing the gun i mean it, it just um it's it's just been a interesting story yeah sad but interesting story if you guys ever get a chance virginia says that's her favorite movie that's never been opened we collect things so we've never opened it but that there is a story about a woman in europe mm -hmm. and she meets a gi she meets a soldier and they get hooked up and she comes back to america with them and they back then they were called war brides war stamp war brides and um, this is another life magazine that we've collected over the years and this here if i ain't mistaken that is the ship that was once the battleship that actually brought virginia and uh, her mother catherine to america from europe and um, so it, it's just uh we, we've got history galore mm -hmm. in here and um, there's the calendar November 1941 now that that page has never been turned over to December it's never been but if you'll look our December the 7th uh, for Pearl Harbor 1941 and uh, of course it's just uh, just another piece of history another piece of uh, photos and stuff that we've got in here I know we've probably bored you at this time Again, I know everybody can cut their videos off whenever they want. They can very easily cut it off. You don't have to watch these if you don't want. But there's some people that actually writes us and says, hey, we enjoy it. We love watching it. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, that's what we try to give you. There's the page.
patch from uh, Hubert Bay's unit. Also, Guys? Also, they put some of the commercials next to the end where you think it's the end. You have to wait till the commercial gets done or skip it and then continue on the video. So yeah. Put them in awkward places. Well, there's even one there that we say thanks for joining us, Fred and Sheila McCoy. But we've put another video at the end of it, but they. The screen goes black for a minute, so the person probably thinks that's the end of the video, and it's it's nowhere near. We got another. We added uh, the the radio interview and yeah. uh, different things off the computer. So, guys, on our videos, we're we're just learning and uh, amateurs. Amateurs is what we are. <laughs> Other than that, Sheila, you can do it again. Please like, subscribe, and share. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye, guys.